Welcome back, this is part two of our world creation tutorial series. Uh, we're going to go over spawn points today. In the previous video we made this world of the trees, the ground, the skybox, and the nice picnic table with the food on it. Um, but we spawned in that, that, that side of the trees, and that's because I kind of ran around a bit and then made my, my clearing. So we should fix that, uh, and to fix that we can uh, add some spawn points. So to get started for creating a spawn point, you need to equip your dev tooltip. With the dev tooltip equipped, you can open up the hand menu and go to create new. Once you're in the create new menu, go to object, and then you'll see two different options here. You'll see spawn area and spawn point. Spawn area is the more commonly used one for a more sort of social or um, exploration world where a lot of people join in and it doesn't really matter where they spawn or how they spawn. So we'll start with that. This creates a spawn area object and you can see it's quite large. It by default adds a gizmo to it so you can instantly place it. Please make sure these are in the ground because they by default use the feet so you don't want people falling in so just put them on the ground gently. You can change their size using the scale gizmo here and that will shrink it down or make it bigger. We're going to leave it at the default size for now. With that in that's all you need to do. Um, there are advanced things we're going to go over, but if I just go ahead and respawn, so I'm going to open the session menu, go to users, double tap on respawn, you'll see I'm now spawning, but I'm facing this way, and this is what I meant about the advanced setup. I'm facing this way, as in out into the openness. I want to be facing that way towards my picnic table. Let's grab our inspector tooltip. Looks like I lost mine in the respawn, so I'll grab another one. Let's open up the world root and find the spawn area here. With it selected again, you'll see that the blue arrow here is facing this way, which is the way that we spawned. And that's because spawn areas have us spawning by default facing where the blue arrow is, also known as the forward direction in vectors. We'll cover those in another video. So if you want to change which orientation someone spawns in, just hit the rotate gizmo, and then spin it around on the Y axis till the blue arrow faces the other side. Doesn't have to be precise again, we're just learning. With that done, I'll respawn again. And I'm now facing this way. Now we've done uh, the basic setup, let's go into something the inspector can handle. So in the inspector here, I've selected the spawn area, and I'm gonna go through the slot hierarchy first. In the spawn area, you'll see there is a visual the visual here is the actual ring. Something which I see some users do is they'll select the visual using the secondary part of the... Oh, I lost my dev top tip again. Using the secondary select, um, and then they'll adjust just the visual using the gizmos. That doesn't actually change the spawn area. If I change this visual, and I make this smaller, spawn area itself is still the same size, so only change the spawn area, don't change the visual. Let's just reset the scale on that one. If you don't want there to be a visual, or you want to change the visual, you can make your own slot here that's different. You can change the color up here, so we want it, say, red. We can go red, and now it's red. You can set your own materials here, change everything up, but you can also hide it, just go to the top active and now it's hidden it still works because this is uh, still active now we've got the actual component so on the spawn area slot you'll see common spawn area um, standard properties persistent update order and enabled uh, if a spawn area is disabled here and enabled it will not be able to be spawned into if there are no spawn areas within the world you'll spawn at 0, 0, 0 by default here you'll see other check, user check radius. This tries to make sure you don't get forced between users. Um, I've not had an issue with that one, except in a map, which is a very specific case, so don't worry about it too much. Um, so this is just trying to make sure players don't bump into each other when they spawn. Parent user is very interesting. It will parent the user to the platform. Um, this is very good if you have like a moving world or a train world where there's a you know a path going and you want people to instantly follow. Like if you had a ship that was flying and you had a spawn point on it, you'd use parent user to put them under there. Um, it's also good to do that sometimes if you want to keep the world route tidy. Um, it will mean everything that someone spawns or creates will appear underneath the spawn area rather than underneath the world route. Orient user means it will orient the user to that blue arrow that we set up. That's by default, that's why we went over it, so it'll make them face that picnic table. 
scale user is very interesting. It will scale them to the size of the spawn area here. So if I scale this down to say 0 0.5, it will scale the user down to 0 0.5. You can use this trick to um, force people into a default scale when they, um, when they join. You can still do the reset world scale option to go back to a larger size, but um, it, it's an interesting way to make start people off small, like an Alice in Wonderland world where you're small and then you drink the potion and get bigger. Um, super doable with this. Capacity is how many users can spawn at the spawn point. You'll see negative one here and that means unlimited, but you can also set this to a number and that is a way to kind of divide teams. So. Only 10 people can be on the left spawn point and 10 people on the right spawn point. You'll see here base weight. Weighting is um, how a spawn point is selected. I'm not entirely sure how it works with the common spawn area. It'll make more sense with the spawn points. Um, am I actually, I think the user spawner looks at it. Uh, that's how it works with like, the spawn points at least. Um, it sees like uh, where to put someone and it will stack them based on the weightage. So if the first spawn point is full, it'll go to the one with the next highest weight. So you might say like, you know, the most important position within a game needs to be filled first and then fill it up slowly going around or going down a ship or down a map or something. You'll see here uh, position node is, is feet and rotation node is feet. This allows you to adjust how they're positioned. That's why you put the spawn point in the ground because um, it positions where their feet are, not any other part of their body. You can change that up to um, the root or the head. Ground projected head is like uh, you take their head and then you raycast down to the ground. You can also do hips, um, that might be good for some chairs or vehicles or things. Uh, you also see here that the spawn point has a generator on it. The spawn point generator is um, the area that they're spawned in. You'll see here it is the radius of four, which means if I turn this visual back on, they spawn anywhere within that radius of four. You can change that up to use a circle point generator with a shell option, and it means they'll spawn around the outside of that area. Or you can change it up for other generators. You can find these in attach component uh, transform point generators. And you'll see here circle point generator, point generator, sphere point generator, square point generator. Those can all plug into there. The spawners, I can't rightly remember where they are. I think they might be common spawn area. There it is. So it's inside users. You want to make your own uses common spawn area. That's it for the spawn area. You can have more than one. Uh, it's common in just social worlds to have one though. Do consider turning off the visual um, or adjusting it. Um, one of my personal pet peeves, it's fine, but personal pet peeve is seeing the big glow ring in a map like this. This is a, a, a wooded map, like, uh, you know, it's meant to look like nature. And then we've got this big sort of glowing, like UFO landing zone. You might want to place it like a, a row of sticks or a surround of stones or something like that. That might be cool. Or maybe like a campsite, that's where you spawn. Um, think about that when you're designing the world. If we save this world, this will now be persisted. And when people start in the world, they'll spawn here. I think we'll leave it there for this one. We've been going on eight minutes already, so I'll cover spawn points in the next one. They are kind of the same, um, but there are some slight differences there, and we can also show some advanced setups with those, how those work. So we'll do spawn points next, um, and then you should know how to spawn people. See you next time.